Hi guys, and welcome back to Eden's Angora. My name is Alyssa, and today we're gonna to be talking about the differences and similarities between two very popular Angora breeds, the French Angora and the German Angora. Let's get right into it. We've got a lot of information to cover. So maybe you're new into Angoras and you're trying to decide breeds, and that's part of the reason why you clicked on this video. Let's talk about money because that's probably important while you're starting out. So there is a huge difference, and you've probably heard that, between Germans and French in terms of price. Okay, so German Angoras in terms of the rabbits themselves are at least double the price of a good French Angora, maybe triple, um, actually likely triple, there we go, we'll say that. Um, and in terms of equipment too, I'm sure you've heard that French don't require a lot of equipment and Germans do. I do have a note about that. Um, they're both rabbits, so you're gonna invest a lot in housing and different things like that. The difference that I find is in the blower and clippers. So a French does not require a blower to blow out their coat or clippers to shear them because they molt and Germans do not. You have to shear them like sheep. However, when I've talked to breeders that have been into Angoras and French Angoras for a while, usually they end up investing in those things anyway. So maybe you won't need them right away or if you have one or two fiber companions, but if you're serious about the breed, you'll probably end up investing in that equipment anyway. So there you go, spoiler alert there. Okay, the Germans produce at least double the wool of the French. And that's part of the reason for the price difference is a French is gonna give you, um, I'm gonna say a huge range because there really is a huge range in both of these breeds, but maybe three to six ounces. And the Germans probably six to 16 ounces. It's just a huge, range and that goes for the French as well. They can get up to, you know, nine ounces maybe. Anyway, I hesitate a lot to share my opinion on things because it's all based on personal experience and bloodlines just have a lot to do with it. By the way, let me introduce these two ladies. So this is Raisin Buns Beyonce. I named her Beyonce, but um, she was bred by Heidi Bengelink. I really, really love Heidi's rabbits. And this is MG's Evangeline, bred by Lauren Cody. My friend Krista bred the little lilac buck that's hopping around. Okay, the French are ARBA recognized, so you can show them. The Germans do have their own association, but the shows are really few and far between. So if you wanna get into showing or you're in 4-H, the French might be the way to go there. Also, there's a big difference in body type. The Germans, as we're gonna come back to again and again and again, were bred for fiber production. So they have a longer body type. It's a little easier to get your clippers down. Whereas the French, let me cover Evangeline's ears, they are a dual purpose breed and can also be used for meat. So they have a lot more of a compact, they're not compact, they're commercial, but they have a lot shorter of a body type. Let's say shorter, not compact. Um, Cause they can carry meat over their loins a lot better than a German who has a lot lower meat to bone ratio. Um, so there you go. There's a sensitive topic for some people, but you know, in terms of, of what these animals were bred for, there is a big difference there. Um, okay, so along with the wool production, the Germans are a lot more feed efficient for that reason. So if you have a large number of animals that you're keeping, you're, I mean, it does make a difference. You're gonna be paying just about the same amount to feed both of these guys and you're gonna get double the wool from the German. So that does, that does make a really big difference in the scheme of things in terms of time and work that you're putting into your rabbitry. I will say I'm a serious um, fiber producer and most of my rabbits are Germans. I do have an increasing number of French as well, um, but 
yeah, these guys are a lot more feed efficient. They're also a lot less work to groom. And again, this is another hot button topic. I feel like almost all of these are um, because it, it really does depend on the bloodline. But a good German, you're not going to have to really touch that coat um, in a senior which is over six months old, you're not really gonna have to touch that coat besides blowing it out maybe once a week, once every other week. Um, whereas a French, you're gonna have to blow them out or comb them out a lot more often, especially when they're molting, because as they release that hair shaft, um, if you don't get it out of there, it can tangle with the new coat. So they're a lot more prone to matting than a German, in my opinion. Okay, I also find that the Germans are more docile. They are a lot easier to groom, in my opinion. They sit a lot more still in general, and there's always exceptions to the rule. But I find that the French are flightier. They tend to kick more when flipped on their back. They're just a more natural rabbit. And to that point, they're able to live a more natural life. So we're switching from a negative to a positive here. I find as a rabbit breeder that I'm always balancing the needs of the rabbit with the needs of the fiber, being an Angora rabbit breeder. And oftentimes there's a huge difference between what the rabbit would find ideal and what their fiber would find ideal. So it's a little bit difficult. Uh, so. The rabbits need space to run and time outside of their cage, which is always more difficult on the fiber. Um, with the French, they don't have wool on their front feet. Some may have wool on their back feet. The Germans have wool everywhere, like the English, um, including all down their front legs. And their stomachs are a lot softer, like everywhere else, whereas the French have a heavy guard hair on their stomach. Um, and that means they pick up less dirt, leaves, hay, things like that from running around in the grass or on the ground. Now I have found a way to mitigate this and that is by using rubber matted play areas for my Germans. This keeps them clean, but they still get their exercise. So there's workarounds for everything. Moving into the next point, I mentioned that the Germans have softer stomachs, but they also have softer wool on their back, a lot softer than a French. The French have more guard hairs, which provide more color depth and also a more resistant wool to debris. But you, you do pay for that um, in terms of softness. Now, I recommend German as a more appropriate for a high percent angora blend or a hundred percent angora blend yarn i wouldn't recommend that with the french because even though it has a more striking halo and it might look amazing as a hundred percent yarn it's not necessarily next to skin soft and i did discuss that in my video why i no longer breed french angoras which is not true anymore one year later um, by the way, but I do find that different breeds have different strengths. That's not one of their strengths, um, making 100% French Angora yarn. However, if you blend it out with something softer like merino wool, you can still get a nice balanced yarn. Okay, so facial furnishing, furnishings, furnishings, yeah. There's definitely a big difference. Um, French are allowed to have lightly tasseled ears, but you can see Evangeline has a lot cleaner of a face than Beyonce. And Beyonce, oh, I really did it now. I turned her, it's over now. Beyonce has a lot thicker cheek furnishings and I call them my little cheerleaders because they have big thick tassels or pom-poms on the ends of their ears. It's so much fun. Now Beyonce's molting right now on her face, so her face isn't as long as usual, but I chose these two rabbits for my side-by-side -by -side comparison because they're the same color. And going back to that point, they're both chestnuts, but there's a huge difference in their color. You'll find that between individual rabbits, but in this case, it's also um, because of the difference in breed. 
The French have more guard hairs, as we mentioned several times. The guard hairs carry a lot more color saturation or color depth. And this means if you're a person that's passionate about undyed yarns, you might be better off going with a more color saturated breed like a French or a satin Angora, whereas the English, German, and Giant seem to have softer wool but less color saturation. All right. Now we're going to go on to another difficult topic to discuss, which is longevity. Um, Despite their high price point, I have found in my personal experience, as well as talking with very, very experienced breeders, that the Germans just have a lot shorter of a lifespan than the French. So if I was getting just pets, I would not go for the German because you get very, very attached to them, especially because they are so docile but they just don't end up lasting very long in my opinion and experience. Now this is one of the top things that I feel like needs worked on with the breed and I'm planning on working with it, but it seems like the higher the production of the animal, you know, the less longevity is focused on. And that goes back to my point again of the French being just a more natural rabbit in my opinion, whereas the Germans, they were bred for fiber production, not longevity. So if you're a breeder, it's fine. You know, you're gonna have subsequent generations, but if you're not planning on breeding, plan on investing in these rabbits um, more regularly than these. We'll just keep it general there, because again, there's a lot of a difference between the bloodlines. I have found that between two and four years is average for the Germans. Sometimes I lose them earlier. And that's just, it's not a fun thing to talk about, let alone to deal with. Whereas the French tend to have a good long lifespan. I did have one who was nine. Um, and, and I think that's great. I think that's wonderful. Okay, the French also seem to be easier to breed than the Germans. The Germans are a little bit pickier when it comes to the time, timing of breedings. So if you're looking for really regularity to your breeding program, adding some French in might help you out there. All right, so another pro for the Germans is we mentioned that they don't molt. That means you can get a longer staple length of fiber. The French are kind of preset around two and a half inches, three inches. This is going to molt out. Whereas with my Germans, I'm able to keep the fiber going up to four inches. Um, I, I tend to cut it at four months so that I don't run into any coat molting issues, which can happen, but a four inch staple length is, is wonderful to work with when compared to a two and a half, three inch staple length. And these guys can, depending on their protein level of their feed, they can grow a longer coat, but it's not gonna be the four inches that the Germans can get you. So that's something to consider. Um, the French tend to be cleaner while not grooming them. So, they don't collect as much stuff around their hind end as the Germans, which have that densely packed fiber right down there by their tail and they tend to collect things there. Um, but while you're grooming them, if you're grooming a French, you, your environment, everyone you love will be covered in Angora. Whereas the Germans, they don't release this coat until you release it in general. So you can keep it a lot more controlled. And I personally like that, depending on if I have to go out later that day, it's just nicer to keep myself neater. So I like that about the Germans, but the French do tend to be cleaner in general. Their wool tends to be a little bit cleaner. Bucks are a mess no matter how you look at it, but the does, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, another pro for the French is you don't have to blow them out. We mentioned that at the outset. That's nice. Okay, I think we covered everything. That is great. So both have large litter sizes. I've had up to 10 from both. Both are big rabbits. 
they do have a huge weight range, the Germans do, which is why they're not accepted by the American Rabbit Breeders Association. Um, but I find both of them nine pounds, you know, seven pounds low end, nine, 10 pounds high end. Um, they're pretty large rabbits. They're both beautiful and extremely personable, nice rabbits to have around. Really, I don't think you can go wrong. Maybe you should get both, I don't know. And they require similar care. They're both rabbits, even though they do have a lot of differences, they have a lot of similarities. So you're gonna have to invest in similar housing, you know, a lot of similar things. I really think you shouldn't choose personally. Like why would you why would you force yourself to choose between two wonderful worlds? And I think that's where I came to when I got out of French for a while is there are certain things that I really missed about them and I realized I really didn't have to choose and neither do you. But I hope if you do feel like you you only want to stick to one breed that this video helped. Please give it a like if it did and consider subscribing to my channel because I'm going to be um, posting a lot more videos similar to this in the future. Take care guys. Bye.